Well, before the break, we heard a couple of inspiring stories of how dogs can really help change lives. But there comes a time when we must say goodbye to our little buddies. Yeah, if you've ever had to put a pet down, you know just how tough that decision can be. And for kids, it's a decision that's difficult to understand. But now one family hopes to make that decision and loss a bit easier. Pumpkin was a very sweet dog. Was very overweighted. <laughs> she, she, she could barely get on the couch. For JT and his 10-year-old sister Mercy, Pumpkin was a member of the family. The five-year-old Beagle and Bulldog Mix was lazy and sweet. I really loved her. But just last year, Pumpkin was injured and the family decided it was best to put her down. If we loved her enough, then we shouldn't have kept her from her, we shouldn't have kept her alive just so she could be in pain for the rest of her life. My heart was breaking for them because their heart was breaking. Mom Kelly tried to find books on the subject to help her kids better understand their pain, but there weren't a lot of good options. So she decided to write her own, a true-to-life story of Pumpkin's death, including euthanasia and burial. Now the kids are helping to illustrate it. Their plan is to set up dioramas with dollhouse miniatures and then take pictures of them. I hope it helps kids um, de know, know that they're not the only ones that are going through this. And the family hopes their book will get published by a company, but they're also looking into self-publishing. Yeah, that's making the best out of a bad situation. Yeah. Well, another author we want to introduce you to has already ironed out the details with a publisher, and now she's busy climbing the ladder of success. In fact, she's working on her second book. Oh yeah, did I mention that she's only 12? Jimmy has that story. A girl who, whose light complexion and green eyes made her brown hair look like liquid chocolate flowing over her shoulders. Megan Pickering is reading from her book, The Believers. It was published last spring. Since then, she's been doing readings, book signings, and even a personal appearance at an elementary school to talk about writing. Megan is 12. I finished it in about three months. It's the story of a group of kids summoned by a magical yak to defend the earth against the monsters who want to control it. Exactly the kind of story other kids love. Megan says she's always written short stories, but one day told her mom she thought she could write a book. A little encouragement is all it took. Sometimes I could write for hours and not run out of ideas, but sometimes it was really hard to come up with ideas. When writer's block hits, Megan says it's a good idea to have something else you're working on that you can switch to. Pretty sophisticated, huh? She says the most fun was the invitation to an elementary school where her aunt works to talk to fourth graders about writing. The kids read the book, then Megan came to visit. She answered questions and signed copies of the book. And now she's working on book two. All right, so how far along are we on this? I have 10 chapters. Really? Definitely been bitten by the fame and fortune bug, but she's got a plan B. I want to do this for a living when I grow up, but I'm planning on when I go to college to get an engineering degree in case writing doesn't work out. An engineer uh, would be a good backup plan. Well, Megan's book is available from Amazon. The electronic version is available from Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, or iTunes. I think she's on her way to a great future, yeah, only so. 12 years <laughs> old. And Sean, another young lady is making quite a name for herself in the literary world, but not because she's writing books. It's what the seven-year-old noticed on a book that upset her and inspired her to demand change. Wait, go ahead. A galaxy is huge. It includes stars, planets, and other space objects. Little Parker Danes had no idea how big a change she'd make. When I went to the library, I saw a cool book. And after she took it home, that book made her angry. I picked it up and, and read the title, Biggest, Baddest Books of Bugs. It was part of a series, Pirates, Monsters, Warriors, Beasts, and Bugs. But the title wasn't the problem. Biggest, Baddest Books for Boys. Yeah. And you didn't like that, huh? No. The seven-year-old says, why just boys? Girls can like books, too. I told Dad that we needed to do something. And what did you do? I wrote a letter. And sent it straight to the publisher. When I saw the back cover title, it said, Biggest, Baddest Books for Boys, and it made me very unhappy. Less than a month later, Abdo Publishing wrote her back. They took my advice really well, and in the letter I saw, mm -hmm. 
is true and they're not even lying. It's incredible that someone so young has been able to make such a big change. And biggest, baddest books for boys became no more. The publisher printed a new series for both boys and girls. You changed the entire title of the book. How does that make you feel? Super duper 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 super 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 duper 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 happy! And an even prouder dad. When she decides what it is that she wants to do as far as a career, She's going to take it and she's going to run with it and no one's going to slow her down. Oh, that's the cloud of hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So if you see other books that are just for boys or just for girls, you think you'll write more letters? Uh, I would think so. Ah, you go, Parker. Now, publishers beware. Parker is that's reading. Super duper, uber duper, duper cool. <laughs> yes. That's a cool story. <laughs> well, maybe you want to make some changes yourself this new year. Are you finally ready to conquer your biggest challenge? Still ahead on Delmarva Life, we'll meet a woman who can inspire you. After facing her biggest life challenge, she's now helping others take on theirs. Her story next. Or perhaps you want to better your health in 2015. Find out how you can get started. But first, you know Delmarva Life is all about community. That's your community too. Now, is there something going on in your neighborhood? We'd love to hear about it and see your photos from the event. Send the information our way along with any pictures you'd like to share. You can reach us at comments at delmarvalife.com or like us on Facebook and share the info there. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.